G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today you've reached part 6 of my Revit feasibility series and we've reached Dynamo. Um, so for some of my followers I know you prefer Dynamo so hopefully you enjoy this part as well. Um, so we're looking at shadow diagrams today. In the last part we actually looked at shadow diagrams in Revit the manual way. Now I'm going to show you a quick way that I used to set them up using Dynamo. So we've covered um, the five components of feasibility to set up a Revit feasibility study. So hopefully you've watched these already or you have a sample project where you can set up some shadow diagrams. So we're gonna be looking at the setup today and then we'll be moving on to some face analysis and some direction analysis after that, such as views and solar hours, which I think are quite popular topics when it comes to feasibility. And then how we can do a more detailed refinement of those studies uh, by analyzing particular rooms and apartments in a building. And then we'll go to Power BI at the end. Um, so again, we're not teaching the basics of setting up a shadow study here. We're actually just really going through what we went through in the last session and showing how to streamline it. So essentially we've set up diagrams that look a little bit like this, but the problem is that we've had to do one at a time. So it's quite slow. Uh, so we're gonna be using no custom nodes today, which is good news. We're using one pre-written Python script, which you can find at the website listed here um, or at the DTX Dynamo library website, um, which is set up by a few people at ACOM. So thank you for sharing these. Um, we're using a script today that utilizes a Python node that basically comes from one of their scripts. And all the Python node does is set the, the, the sun settings to a particular time. Um, so without further ado, let's actually get started. So we're just gonna jump into our our um, feasibility study model and this is the shadow study that we've set up so if you haven't seen the previous video essentially all this view is is CAD of the site overlaid upon a 3d topography with the topo lines turned off so underneath here there's actually a topography you can see I've got it selected here and that's what my shadow is casting on uh, but anyway we're going to set up a whole bunch of times and plans and we're going to use a view template to keep them consistent. So I've already set up a view template called shadow diagram and essentially it locks in everything except for the lighting settings. So you wanna free up your lighting settings so that we can set the sun setting of different views in different ways independently of our view template. <clears throat> you could also free up design options as well, but I'll show you a way that I manage design options using templates shortly. Uh, we've also set up a scope box to set the limit of our view so that when we set up all our shadow diagrams, we can really quickly crop them to the same size. Anyway, let's move into Dynamo itself. So the, we're gonna build two scripts today. The first script we're gonna build is just gonna set up the views and name them in a particular way. And the second script is gonna set up the sun study settings for those particular views based on their name. So essentially we're doing a, a one-two punch combo per se. So we're just gonna start off by setting up some date times. But what we need to do is potentially set up more than one date time. So we're gonna set up some integer sliders and we're gonna build the script so that it can run through Dynamo player. So we're just going to go to manual mode. And this first one we're setting up is the year. And for this one, you just need one slider. So we'll just say that we start in this year and we finish in 2030 with a step of one. And by default, we'll go with this year. From there, we want to get the start month and also the end month. And as you can guess, the month is one to 12 with a step of one. And we'll just go six by default because the most common setting that people use for studies in Australia, from what I understand, is the winter solstice, which is the middle of the middle of June, well, almost the end of June, the 22nd to be specific. So we're gonna do a start month and an end month. And basically the start month and the end month, if they're the same, they'll dictate just a range of one month because we're gonna feed these into ranges. We're also gonna do day and we'll be able to pick any day or any number of days. So we'll go between one and 31. And we'll just go to 22 by default so that we're hitting the winter solstice in Australia. And likewise, there'll be an end day. And I'll show you sort of how these ranges work shortly. Uh, from there, we're pretty much just going to add a code block of zero, which is going to be for our, our seconds and milliseconds. Um, but what we're going to do is set up a date time by date. So I believe we need to set up date time by date and time there we go and we're basically just going to feed in all those ranges so we're going to have to set up a couple of ranges now so we're just going to do uh, start to end with a step of one for our month and the same for our day as well so essentially if we have uh, more than one month and more than one day we get ranges instead so we'll feed those in 
And then for the remainder, we're just gonna have to set up actually, we'll have to set up a start hour as well before I forget. So usually I just do between one and 23 so that we don't have to worry about formatting uh, mid, uh, midnight and uh, daybreak. Well, not even daybreak, just midnight itself. So usually the most common range of times we work with in Australia is nine till three. So I'm gonna make that my default setting in this case as well. And then I'm just gonna feed that into another range, essentially. Okay. So at this point we have um, date times available as ranges. Okay, and then we'll just feed in minute, second and millisecond as zero. And for our date time, what we're gonna do is set this to cross product in its lacing settings. So that we generate every possible outcome for every range. And we're gonna flatten the outcome as well. And if I just set this to display the results and I start running this script, you'll see at the moment it generates a range for our time. Obviously, if I wanna have a few different days, you can see that it generates possible outcomes for every day and every hour. And obviously the more things you add, such as month ranges, um, the more outcomes you'll expect to see. So you can see that's how a cross product works with date time. Uh, to keep things simple, we're gonna do one day in one month um, from nine till three which will give us seven, seven date times to work with. Okay, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our naming convention for our view. So we need to go and get the components of our date time. So we're gonna look for date time components. And we're basically gonna reverse engineer our date time. And we're gonna build a naming convention. So we're just gonna get a string first, and we're just gonna add a, the option for a user add to add a prefix to their views, which usually they'll want to do because they will have different design options. Um, so they'll need to add a prefix of some sort. And by default, I just make it say prefix. That way the user understands what they're looking at. And then all we need to do is set up a formula to generate a, a string. So we're gonna say prefix plus D uh, for day plus uh, dash. Uh, we'll do plus year, oh sorry, plus month. Plus dash, plus year, plus underscore, plus hour, plus, uh, by default, we'll just assume that we're working at whole hours. Okay, so we should get a formula. So from that, we're gonna take the various components. We're gonna take our prefix. We're gonna take our day, our month, our year, and our hour. So if I run this, the output should basically be our, our naming convention. So if I call this option 1a dash space, and I run this, this will be our view name, essentially. So you can see here we have a format that we can basically process back into a date time setting in the second part of our script based on the view's name. Uh, I found this is the easiest way to do it, unless you use Python to do the script all in one. Um, to keep things simple, I'm actually only gonna use the Python script that's available publicly. Um, and also I'm still trying to learn how to manage date times as a list in Python. Um, at the moment, I haven't quite got the hang of it. Anyway, we're gonna go back and count the number of date times, and then we're gonna take a level. So this is the level that the floor plan will be derived from. Um, you can pick a default if you like. I'll just pick the default of datum. It doesn't really matter because each project is going to be different. But we want to make a list of repeated items. So we want to make a floor plan per um, per date time. So we'll take a level times the count of our items. And from there, we're going to derive basically a floor plan from each of those. So you can see we have just seven copies of the same plan. So if we have floor plan view by level, this will actually create a Revit floor plan for each of those levels, which essentially are all the same level. Um, but what we need to do to finish off our script is we need to set parameter by name, and we need to set the, the view name uh, to be this, this piece of information we've got down here. So in this case, we're going to take a string and we're gonna set the parameter view name I think you can you can leave lacing on auto, but if you want, just do longest, just to make sure that the parameter is sourced um, over and over again for each of our values. Okay, so that's pretty much our first part done, um, but all we need to do now is run the script. We're gonna run it out of Dynamo Player. 
So what you need to do is come in and actually right click all the things that you want to make an input. And usually it's good to do it in the order that you want the inputs to show up. So in this case, I'm just going to make all of these inputs. And that's also why I was naming these nodes as well as I went, because that is the name that Dynamo Player will show you. Okay, and then the last thing we need is we need the prefix and also the, the level. Okay, so we'll just save that and we'll run this through Dynamo Player. So I'm just going to open Dynamo Player. Also the way, I'll just grab a drink. Deleted that after a hard day at work. <clears throat> Come on, Dynamo Player. There we go. Cool. So I'm just going to navigate to where I've been keeping my scripts. Um, like a great user, I've been keeping my scripts on the desktop, which is probably the worst place to keep your Dynamo scripts. So don't do that. Anyway, I'm just going to open the input setting of my Dynamo script in Dynamo Player. And we're just going to set up a, a range of views now based on this script. Again, it can take a little while. Dynamo Player seems to be quite slow the first time you open something. Uh, such as the script's inputs. After that, it seems to be quite quick. Okay, so we can just take our year as 2019. Our month is going to be June. Our start day and our end day is the 22nd. And uh, we're going from 9 till 3. In this case, we're going to make our prefix option 1b dash space. And we'll set up our views from datum level. Okay, so we'll just run our script. And we do not want to name our corresponding views. And you can see, there we go. We have a set of views uh, derived. Um, at the moment, they should look a little bit strange. So this is where you'll need a view template to apply to them. So in this case, I'm just going to apply the shadow diagram template. Okay. And from there, I will also set my scope box. Cool. So you can see by default, they're all the same time. So this script hasn't actually set the the sun settings at the moment. The sun settings will just be the default, uh, which is usually a still lighting direction, which is not a good sun setting because it doesn't relate to anything in the real world, just an azimuth and an altitude, so which doesn't reflect the time of day necessarily. Okay, so at that point we have our range of views. Now we need to process their daytime using Dynamo into a sun setting. So at this point, we're going to actually build a, a new script. So this is essentially like part two of the workflow per se. So we're just going to reboot Dynamo so that we can build our second part. And, and this part's a lot easier. All we're really doing is unwinding the algorithm of how we've named our view name. So I'm just going to go to a script I've just put together with the, the Python script that we're heading towards. So this is the Python script. It essentially relies on you telling it the view that you're trying to feed in. Uh, the date time, which you're also trying to feed in, and also the shadow intensity, which can be a number from 10 through to 90. And essentially the output is just that your setting is updated. So it's, it's a fairly simple script, um, but obviously I didn't have to learn how to build this in Python, which is great, and neither do you. Um, but if you want to learn Python, go for it. Okay, so we're going to start by just getting the current view of our document. And we're going to get the active view of the current document. Okay, so this should basically be able to find out which view we're currently looking at. Because we're going to run this out of Dynamo Player. So if I run this, you can see that it knows we're looking at this view with this particular name. So from here, we're going to get the, the name of that element. So we'll look up element name. And from there, we're actually going to go and get our name and we're going to remove the prefix. So we need to actually set up an input for a user to say what their prefix is. So we're going to find option 1b dash. Um, obviously, the user can come and change this themselves. So we're going to count how long this string is because we essentially want to remove this from the view name. And we're going to use string remove in order to do that. So we're going to take our element name we're going to take off this many characters starting at the first index, which is zero. So essentially we'll end up with the element name and then we'll end up with a shortened element name based on our prefix. So there you go. You can see that's how we get back to our uh, automatic part of our view, um, taking off the part that user sets. 
Uh, from there, we're actually going to split our string. So we're going to look up string split. And we're going to split it based on our two delimiters, which were a dash and an underscore. So we're going to pick dash and underscore as strings. Uh, remember in code blocks, if you do double apostrophes, it's a string. So we're going to feed these in. And essentially this will give us a small list. And now you can recognize little pieces of a date time here. So you can see a day, a month, a year, and the, the time, and the zero doesn't matter. Um, so essentially we can actually take these to numbers. So we're going to do string to number. Okay. Um, and that's just so we're not dealing with text values anymore. And we're just going to take each various part of this list. So we're going to take, first we'll take the year, which is at index two. Then we'll take the month at index one, the day at index zero. And then we'll take the time at index three and the minute at index four. And then we'll just get a, a zero to feed into our milliseconds. Cause what we're going to do is build a date time out of these settings. So we're basically reverse engineering. Um, so we're going to do date time uh, by date and time. So you recall that we literally built this um, not, not that long ago in the first part of our script. Uh, sorry, date time by date. By date and time, there we go. So we'll take our year, our month, our day, our hour, our minute, which is zero, and our second and our millisecond. I could set minute to zero, but I'm essentially just future-proofing my script in case minutes become relevant. Um, and the user may want to set it up so that they can change the minutes to something like 30 if they need to. Um, and all we really need to do at that point is go and grab our little Python script and feed in some values. So essentially the top value is going to be our view back here, all the way back at the start. And then the second setting is our date time. And the third setting is a shadow intensity between 10 and 90. So this is essentially how dark your shadows are in your, in your graphic display options. So we'll make a range between 10 and 90 with an increment of five. And let's just say by default, we'll work with 50 as our default. Uh, so as you can guess, the last thing we need to do is just set some inputs. So our inputs are our prefix and the shadow intensity. So we can just call that shadow intensity. And essentially we have another script ready to use in Dynamo Player now. We'll just call that prefix and we'll save. So essentially we're just gonna leave now and jump back in Dynamo Player. And we're gonna set the sun settings of each of these views respectively. So I'm just gonna make Revit a little bit smaller so we can share Dynamo Player and Revit in one window. Usually I work with two windows. Um, so I'm just creating a little bit of real estate so you can see it in action. Uh, let's just get that in the right spot. That will do, cool. Okay, so we're just gonna open the input settings for part two. which is a much simpler script. And essentially all you need to do with this script is as long as your view is named correctly, uh, all your user has to do is visit that particular view they wanna set the sun settings for and make sure they type in the right prefix and you just run the script and it unwinds the date time for you. So I can just jump in here and just set this to my active view. And if I know my prefix is correct, which it is in this case, um, I just run the script and automatically it knows what the date time should be in this view. So I can just go to each view and very quickly, I can just run the script over and over again to force my date time. And obviously I can go and build other, other date times as well. So I can go and build more views. Let's say we want to build, uh, I don't know, uh, option 1C for 2019 in December the 21st. So we'll just pick start and end day as the same day. You can always type these in if you need as well from nine till three. And we'll do this for option 1A. Actually we'll do it for option 1B. So again, you just have to run this script once these are all set there. Say no, and you get a list of views. And then we just go in, apply our view template, shadow diagram and our scope box jump in our view, 
open our input for part two, option 1B. Let's say we want our intensity to be 75 this time. Run the script, and you can see just how quick this is compared to manually setting up your shadow diagrams, just with a little bit of good templating and a bit of Dynamo Smarts, um, you can really quickly set up sets of shadow diagrams very quickly. So um, hopefully that's given you a, a good workflow you can use in feasibility or just in general when you're doing a lot of shadow, shadow diagrams at once. Um, if, if you've got any comments or feedback on that workflow, feel free to leave it down below. Um, in the next part, we're going to be looking at what I call face analysis grids in Dynamo. So essentially setting up a sensor grid uh, in order to receive data from things such as the sun. So you, something a little bit like this. So we're going to basically build a small family that will represent a sensor on a building and find a way to equally divide pretty much any surface into a grid, which is <clears throat> easier said than done because there's a lot of different shape surfaces that you can make shapes out of. So the, the script will basically start off uh, a lot of other scripts to do things like this. So in order to collect sun hours and find out how many hours of sun each point on a building is getting, so um, pretty exciting stuff. I think people should enjoy it and get a lot out of it, hopefully. Um, but as I said, if you've got any comments or feedback about that, feel free to leave it down below. If you're not already following or subscribing, um, feel free to do so. I upload videos about three times a week, and there's about five, six more videos in this series to cover, um, which I'll be doing in order. Um, so hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.